When I see people go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in that, that's not it, right? So a feeling of being level, bump, level. I'm not really level, right? Because right? my right hand's lower than my left, but I'm not feeling, I'm not doing this, right? That to me just gets people stuck and yep. usually over rotating inside and now they gotta come over the top. Todd, t this is how, you know, Teach that this is how I teach it to our to our players and our students and I want you to give the checkpoints to this because I think this is awesome right here. This is what he taught me at a young age. Ready? He's going he's gonna to teach the checkpoints this. He used to have me hang my hands and where they hung relative to my lower body, especially like my right hand according to my kneecap over here, was a cool one. So I'd set up narrower and I always tell people when the outsides of the feet are on the outsides of the shoulders, it's pretty cool. Like, I've seen players like Xander Shoffley on this range doing this. They'll get an alignment rod, they'll get their shoulder width, they then put it on the ground. They have a wedge so the outsides of their feet are more aligned with the outsides of their shoulders. They then have an eight iron or a mid iron. Middle feet laces more aligned to the outsides of their shoulders. And then a driver. Insides of the feet, more outside the shoulders. Now, right. what's cool is, I'm still creating that inch hip bump for every single one. But the weight distribution changes because my width of stance and my upper body in relation to my lower body. Yeah. So what happens for a wedge, that narrow stance, that inch hip pump puts a pretty significant amount of weight on my left side. Now, when I take my little wider stance, yeah, it's still on my left side with a mid iron, but rather than being almost 75, 25 or 70, 30, I'm sitting there more 60, 40, but now the driver comes out and I'm really focusing on one and one. Well, now the majority of my weight's being supported by the inside of my right leg. I feel, I feel more 60, 40. So Todd, real, right? so yeah. Todd, do the, do the drill where you would hang your hands down. Show, show our viewers yeah, so where he, they can hang their hands relative so to the body. So here's the thing, like when I'm looking at someone face on, what I'm looking at, I'm looking at their sternum in relation to their belt. And so when I go like this, mm -hmm. my belt's going that way, my sternum's going this way, right? So if I do that and I literally hang my hands down, like say I'm a driver stance. Yeah, do driver stance. be yeah. about here, right? And I go like this and like this, my right hand is really right over the top of my right kneecap. My left hand is hanging on the inside of my, of my left kneecap. And you notice my right knee is on the inside of my right foot. Mm -hmm. So when I go into my rotation, I'm building into the inside of my right leg, right? Mm -hmm. Where I can, you know, like I love the boxing analogy. It's like, yes. okay, I'm loading up to load a punch, right? So I'm going to be this way. I'm not going to go over here. I don't have any power or as much power. But if I'm like this, I can really use the ground and push this way and create Absolutely. some speed. But that's a great checkpoint. Like, if anybody wants to know where they're at, they get all set. All they got to do is go like this. Look at your left hand. If it's like this, you know that you don't exactly. have your hips forward enough. And then look at your right hand. Take it off. Go like that. Ought to be over your right kneecap. Right? Simple way to check. I love checkpoints because checkpoints are we great. can't see ourselves when we're playing. And, you know, if someone's not in front of us, we're not giving them feedback. They've got to be able to help themselves on the range. So yes. Checkpoints are huge. And one of the things I think that's important is that, you know, if you look at enough tour players, you can almost see anything. Like, you definitely can see there's tour players that move this way. There's tour players that move this way. And, and the, the point I would, ha I would say about tour players is, okay, these are very gifted athletes. I don't know if you ever heard this before, but there's the cat and dog theory, right? Have you ever heard of this? I haven't heard this one. Okay, so the cat is like you throw a cat in the air, it's going to land on its feet throw a dog in there, it's going to land on its freaking back, right? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of these tour players, I mean, they're such highly great, highly coordinated athletes. They can get the club out of position or body out of position and get back into position. You know, what we're trying to do is make Countless golf Countless reps, timing. Yeah. Here's the key. Make off as simple as possible. For these players that we're working with where, okay, I've got a life, I've got a family, I've got a <laughs> job. You know, I might get to practice once or twice a week, right? I'm a, I hope to play and I want to enjoy it. So, like, let's the make path of the least simple. amount of manipulation. 100%. How we set you up to turn efficiently and rotate efficiently. How right. we then get the club in spots to yeah. where you don't have to manipulate the most. You know, it's funny. Um, we talked about this earlier too. Certain players out there, we find people modeling their swings after, and even coaches yeah. helping people model their swings after. And then you talk to the player, which we have the luxury of doing, and you realize that people are working on what they're trying to get rid of. Sometimes, sometimes, there's, like, sometimes just, you just don't know. You just don't, don't know have the information. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, and again, you go back to you just got to be careful. And sometimes I'll see someone make comments about a swing that a player took, or uh, on video, and someone makes a comment about a swing or analyze a swing, and it's one zit video, one swing, and one time, and who knows if he hit it good or bad? Who knows? Right. 
So my point is that common sense rules, right? Yep. Let's make it as simple as possible. So and if that top is moving, you guys, it's tough for the average player. You, know, you, can get a, you can get a Roy McIlroy out there with a driver who's hit countless balls and who times it right, and he can do it just fine. And then you get the average golfer out there who's trying to recreate a movement off the ball. Very, very tough to do. But I always thought it was incredibly efficient and very consistent and powerful too. You know, it's, it's powerful to be able to turn and understand that pressure builds in here simply as a result of me turning around the fixed points I created in my setup. At Forzac Golf, we take a lot of pride in having developed some of the best and most consistent golf swings on the planet. We do this through simplicity. Our Full Swing Masterclass will take you on a step-by-step, easy-to-understand process on how to get your golf swing better than ever. Join the many before you who've utilized our Full Swing Masterclass to take their games to the next level and beyond.